Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this morning. I invite you to please make sure you check out the bulletin for all of your announcements and details about news and information that's going on here at Union UCC. Next Sunday, October 4th, we will be celebrating communion. So if you're worshiping with us online, please plan to have your bread and cracker, your juice, wine, or water ready to go. And if you're gonna come worship with us in the Grove, you'll be given a plastic bag with individual portions in it just for you for it to celebrate in Holy Communion. Also next Sunday, October 4th, we will have our virtual coffee hour return and it'll be from 11.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. after worship. The Zoom information will go out in our weekly emails. And if you have a little bit of an issue, please make sure you contact one of the pastors and or the church office for the login or call-in information. We have decided to continue our outdoor worship services in the Grove until October 25th. Be sure to bring your chair, to wear a mask, and to maybe grab a blanket in case it's a little too cold in the morning for you. Make sure you check out your bulletin as well for our Trunk or Treat event, which will happen on October 31st, and all the information on that day. Thank you to everyone who helped to make today a special day for our church family as we celebrate being together and as we celebrate Mrs. Bonzel's retirement serving as our director of Christian education for 23 years. A special thanks to our Funds of Lasting Gifts for their financial support for today. And we are so grateful to have Sarah Ayers, James Supra, and Phil Pilors here for special music. Uh, we are grateful for our barbecue bash and all of the volunteers helping to host. And Laura's Farm Market is here for our pig roast. The menu includes a pulled pork sandwich or chicken, potato salad, coleslaw, hot dogs, ice cream crystal from Crystal Spring Dairy, um, water and or some other treats. So make yourselves at home. You are welcome to eat here or take your food home with you as you leave. Join me in our greeting. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here.
We are children of God, as brilliant as a shining star, as wondrous as an ocean wave, as special as each fragrant rose, as unique as each falling leaf. We are God's children, united in praise, humbled in awe, and prompted to sing and love and serve. Let us pray. God of desert days and wilderness nights, we rest in the comfort of your presence and trust in the sustaining power of your love. Provide us with all that we need to live abundantly and serve with abandon. Amen. Hello, friends, and welcome to Children's Time. For the last two months, we have been talking about the fruits of the Spirit. These are the gifts that are given to us by the Holy Spirit. So, so far, we have talked about patience, love, joy, gentleness, peace, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, and today our last fruit, my favorite one, is kindness. In the Bible, we can read that Paul wrote about the fruits of the Spirit in a letter to the Galatians, an epistle to the Galatians. You can check it out in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22. In the 23 years that I have been working with the children of Union UCC, I have had three main goals. Number one, I wanted to help everyone know that they are welcome and safe at our church, at Union UCC. Number two, I wanted everyone to know that God loves each and every one of us unconditionally. And number three, I wanted to have everybody understand and know that we want to help our neighbors in our community and around the world as much as we can. In other words, be kind. Over the years, we have participated in many, many missions. And missions to me are an act of kindness. We have raised money to help feed the hungry, to clothe the poor, to help new moms who were struggling, to help those that were victims of fire and flood and hurricanes and tsunamis and earthquakes. We have put together school kits, health kits, and cleaning kits. We have collected and donated food and toiletries to local food banks, and we have put together Christmas uh, shoe boxes for local children and even for children around the world. We have raised money for the Four Diamonds Fund to help pay for medical expenses for children who are battling cancer. We have um, sent money to the Council for Native Americans to help provide medical care on reservations. We have sent money for Amigos de Guatemala and for even a school in the Philippines. We have donated money to the Miracle League and to Bethany Home. We have raised money to buy beds for orphanages through Sweet Sleep. We sent seeds, or we sent money to buy seeds for Haiti, um, cows for poor farmers in Zambia, and the list goes on. But the cool thing about kindness is that it doesn't always have to involve money. Kindness can be free. You can show kindness with a smile. You can show kindness by opening a door or carrying someone's groceries, by using kind words. I like to hear a lot of that. You can show kindness by helping with chores around the house, by writing a letter, by drawing a picture for someone. You can be kind to the earth by reducing, reusing, and recycling. You can conserve water, plant a tree, or even use a reusable shopping bag. All things to be kind to the earth. Did you know that February 17th is Random Acts of Kindness Day every year? And I'm kind of glad that kindness gets one day of recognition and extra attention, but I really think every day should be a Random Acts of Kindness Day. What can you do today to show kindness to someone in your family? What can your family do to show kindness 
to someone in your neighborhood or one of your relatives or in your community. I'm sure if that you all got together and put your heads together and brainstormed, you could come up with a long list of things that you can do to show kindness. You can even Google random acts of kindness and you'll find lots of lists of hundreds of ideas there. You know, one of my favorite bulletin boards that I made is currently down in the church basement. If you haven't been there, it very simply says, throw kindness like confetti. You know about confetti. Not quite as bad as glitter, but in the same idea, it gets everywhere. Let's get kindness everywhere. The world needs kindness right now, and I know it. You can make a difference. So let's close with a repeat after me prayer. God of kindness, thank you for the fruits of the Spirit. Thank you for these gifts to live as your people. Help us grow and nourish love, joy, and peace. Patience and kindness. Goodness and faithfulness. Gentleness and self-control. Help us work on sharing the gift of kindness with everyone around us near and far. Amen. This is my last children's time, and I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you. I want to thank all of the children that I have worked with since 1997, in Sunday school, in children's church, in junior youth groups, in vacation Bible school. I had a blast, and, and I have wonderful memories of so many fun moments. You all inspired me, and you motivated me to do my best, and so I thank you. I also want to thank all the volunteers in Sunday School, Children's Church, Vacation Bible School, and Christian Ed Committee, who have so generously given their time and their energy to work alongside me in providing a solid faith formation for our most precious children. I couldn't have done it without you. I want to thank the church staff, past and present employees, for being a team and working together to provide our church members with a nurturing place for their faith journey. I want to thank my family for all the time that they put into my projects and for putting up with me. And lastly, I want to thank our entire church family you are truly a great group of people, so supportive and so generous. My tenure here never felt like a job or like work. I thoroughly enjoyed planning, teaching, learning, being creative, and sharing my faith with all of you. I am so grateful for the time that I was able to spend as the Director of Christian Education at Union UCC. The biggest thank you I can think of is from my heart, thank you all. So stay safe, everyone. Mask up, wash your hands, keep your distance. And remember, I love you, your church loves you, and most importantly, God loves you everywhere, all the time. See you in church. Today at our outdoor 1030 worship service, we are going to be welcoming uh, four new people into our church family, and we're so excited to do that. We are excited to be joined by Elena Bellatieri, Rob and Tracy Bilger, and Gloria Toner. So we are so excited to celebrate with them and join them into our church family this morning. This morning's scripture comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, starting with verse 1. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child, whom he put among them and said, Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, 
And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Here ends this morning's lesson. May God bless those who have heard it and bless our lives as we go forth today. Today we celebrate Kathy Bonzel, who has served here as our Director of Christian Education for 23 years. 23 years. That's 23 years of leading Sunday school teachers and children. That's 23 years of teaching and organizing children's church. That's 23 years of vacation Bible school, bulletin boards, mission projects, Bible stories, staff meetings, preschool meetings, and 23 years of crafts and snacks and more. We are so very grateful um, for how she has loved our kids and our families and show them the way to loving God and God's church. So thank you, Kathy. I came here a year before Kathy started. The previous children's church leaders had just resigned when I arrived. And so that meant that I was doing their job plus my job as the new associate. I cheated a little bit for the first few months, and instead of doing children's church, we did a musical. Maybe some of you remember It's Cool in the Furnace, which was about King Nebuchadnezzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, it was fun, but I'm glad that we found Kathy. Kathy actually started as a volunteer of the director, as the director of our Vacation Bible School. She was uh, cleaning her office the last few weeks and she actually found the bright pink form where she signed up to do this. It was one of those end of VBS surveys where we asked people to give us feedback and to sign up to help for next year. And she signed up to be the director. Now, some might say, watch out for what you sign up around here because you might end up doing it for 23 years but I'd like to think that it only got better from there. On the sign-up form at the time, she said she would help if there was someone to care for her one and a half year old daughter. Um, and that daughter is Megan, who is now 24. Kathy's predecessors only had the responsibility of doing children's church during 1030 worship. We were in the midst of separating from the Lutherans, and so we knew we needed to create our own Sunday school during the 915 education hour, since that was something that we had shared with them. The director of Christian ed position broadened then to include Sunday school and children's church and vacation Bible school, and of course, a bunch of other things. We did a search and Kathy was the obvious and wonderful choice. Kathy's not only been the face, but she has also been the heart and soul of our ministry with children and families. She found a way to not only grow our ministries, but to deepen them. Our kids have grown up feeling like church is their second home, and that's largely in part due to Kathy's loving and welcoming and creative spirit and leadership. And that spirit has been infectious, not only to our kids, but to our whole church and community. In today's scripture, Jesus is telling his followers that in order to enter God's kingdom, they need to become like children. And that whoever becomes humble like a child is the greatest in God's kingdom. And that whoever welcomes a child welcomes him. How do we become more like children? What are the traits of kids that bring us closer to God and closer to God's hopes for us as people and as a church? Is it a child's sense of wonder? Their ability to love others wholeheartedly and without judgment? Is it a child's spirit of justice or their desire to learn and grow? And how do we embody these childlike qualities in our life and in our faith and discipleship and walk with God? How is it that we welcome others here and out there in ways that reflect the same kind of respect and kindness and care and honor as if we are welcoming God? 
Or maybe we need to also reflect on when is it that we fail to do this? Thank you, Kathy, for helping all of us not only love our kids and share our faith with them, but for helping us embrace the best parts of being a kid as we learn and grow as followers of God. Here at Union, we've always made loving our kids one of our priorities in our ministry and also in our mission efforts in the community and the world. When I meet new members, they see this and they get this. The number one reason that people join our church is because of what we do and who we are with children and youth. Thank you, Mrs. Bonzel, for helping to not only nurture our members, but also for creating a place that others want to join and be a part of. We often use words like Sunday school and Christian education to talk about what we do as a church. A newer phrase is being used now, and it's the phrase faith formation. Faith formation is at the heart of what the Christian life is all about. In many ways, we engage in the practices of our daily lives and the rituals of our faith communities through things like worship and mission, working for justice and peace, evangelism, education, so that our faith might be nurtured and enlivened and sustained and formed. In this regard, the imagery offered by the prophet Isaiah of the potter God forming humanity, God's created own, is an appropriate vision for how we might view this ministry of faith formation. We're actually starting a worship series next week with this imagery of God being the potter and us being the clay. A definition of faith formation that's used in our denomination is this, an engaged process of learning and practice integrated throughout all aspects of congregational and daily life. This definition highlights the initiative and the action that we must take in our own faith formation in essence, we become clay so that we are formed and transformed by the holy and by one another. But throughout all of our doing and being, we are reminded that God's hands are continually present in our efforts to gain both our head knowledge and in education and our learning and heart wisdom discovered through prayer and ritual and practice. So today we celebrate Mrs. Bonzel, and we thank you, Kathy, for helping to form our faith along with God, who is the potter of our lives. At 1030 Worship in the Grove today, um, we will be inviting Kathy and her family forward. Uh, don't tell her. Um, and we will also be sharing some presents with her that you and the, con the whole congregation has given a bunch of cards and a bunch of money and gifts uh, to Kathy and some other surprises that you'll hear about later. So thank you everybody for being a part of this celebration and for making your faith formation such a priority in your lives. Amen. For our prayer today, um, I've used this before, so you may have, you may remember it, uh, but I'd like to invite us to learn about a breath prayer and to practice that as our prayer today. Breath prayer is an ancient Christian prayer practice dating back at least to the sixth century. Um, it's also known as the Jesus prayer or the prayer of the heart. Early practitioners would repeat it to the rhythm of their breath, the phrase, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. In time, the prayer was shortened to, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy, or simply, Jesus, mercy. Breath prayer is a good example of praying without ceasing, as St. Paul invited us to do, and has the potential to become as natural as breathing. It's intended to be a very short prayer, a praise or a petition, just six or eight syllables, the words of the prayer can be easy, easily adjusted to your prayers for that time and day. Praise is expressed by calling on one of the divine names such as God or Jesus, Father, Mother, Creator, Christ, 
friend or spirit, whatever word you might prefer for God. And then the other part of the prayer is your request or intention. The breath prayer is usually said silently. You may also use a breath prayer for a focused time during a daily spiritual practice. Simply repeat the prayer over and over, keeping your attention on the prayer. If your attention wanders, gently return to the prayer. You could do this before you have a test or an exam or when you're nervous about something or when something's really weighing heavy on your mind. So breath prayer can be used at any time. So I encourage you to begin with maybe trying your breath prayer for five minutes and then increasing to 10 or 15 or 20 minutes. And you may want to use even a timer to free yourself from worrying about a clock. So here are some more directions. An invitation now to create your own breath prayer here. Close your eyes and recall the line, be still and know that I am God. It's from Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and calm and peaceful and open to the presence of God. And with your eyes closed or your head bowed, imagine that God is calling you by name. Imagine that God is actually asking, Chris, what do you want? What's your prayer today? Like the blind man on the road to Jericho, Jesus kindly looks at you in your eyes and asks, what do you want from me? And give God a simple and direct answer that comes honestly from your heart. You might want to write down your answer. If you have more than one answer, hold on to all of that or write them all down. It may be several words or phrases like, I need to feel your presence or please lead me. Whatever your answer, these are the foundations of your breath prayer. And then select the name that you're most comfortable using to speak to God for this moment and combine it with your answer to the question God asked you. And this is your prayer. So you breathe in the first phrase or word, which is your word for God. And then you breathe out on your second phrase, which is your prayer or your request or your need. You might need to compose several prayers before you find one which answers your words for the day or your thoughts. There's no limit really to developing your breath prayer. It may be the same from day to day for a long time, or it may change often. Sometimes you may want to reverse the practice by sitting in silence and letting the spirit pray through you and asking God to reveal your name and God's desire for you. This can be a profound experience. You may wind up hearing something like, Beloved, you are enough. Or child of mine, rest. Wait on God and see how you might be renewed. So some sample prayers are things like breathing in on the word Jesus, breathing out, let me feel your love. Or God, breathe in and breathe out on show me your way or breathe in on holy wisdom and breathe out on guide me. Or creator, I need your peace. So I'm gonna give us some silence for a little bit for you to create your own breath prayer, your word for God and your prayer, and to breathe in and to breathe out for just a few minutes and then I'll close. Thank you, God, for this time to breathe in your love for us. Thank you for this time to share with you our needs and our heartaches, our hopes and our dreams. Thank you for holding and receiving all the names and people on our prayer list and on our minds and hearts today. We pray, saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We want to thank you for all of the ways that you continue to support God's ministry and mission here at Union in our and in NEFS, in our community and in the world. A reminder that there are lots of ways to continue to do that. You can simply mail in your offering envelopes by putting a stamp on them, the church address is on the other side and sealing them. You can practice or try e-giving if you haven't already. The information's in your bulletin and also on our website. You can donate by using your credit card or your debit card. And of course, as you shop through Amazon, you can choose us as your charity and um, donate to Union UCC through that. May God continue to bless you in your giving and your sharing of God's gifts.
this is the last Sunday we'll be using our September blessing. It's been a huge one, a big one that we've been using. Uh, we often bless backpacks at this time of the year. And uh, I guess I thought since it's such a weird September that instead of just blessing backpacks, we would bless everyone and everything. So I invite you to respond to each line. And when you do, to look for a neighbor around you, um, someone in your home, or also, you know, if you're thinking of those in the Grove today or, um, and think of them or look for them, uh, look into the camera to your church family and uh, let's bless each other. And uh, we miss, of course, handshakes and hugs and greeting each other more closely. And so I encourage you as you respond to do things like send out the I love you sign or the peace sign or make a fist bump or a high five or maybe you'd like to bow to each other or do the Kung Fu salute, which looks like this, as you uh, pray for balance and harmony. So bless us, O oh God, as we seek to love you and others with our whole heart, soul, strength, and mind. Bless us and all for whom we pray, O oh God. Bless our backpacks, our lunch bags, our laptops, laptops, our Wi-Fi, our virtual gatherings, and all of the new learning we experience in school, at home, at church, and in life. Bless us and all for whom we pray, O oh God. Bless our family and friends, our neighbors and community, our church and schools, our nation, our world, and our earth. Bless us and all for whom we pray, O oh God. Bless our masks and our social distancing that we hope will help us get through this time. Help us to see each other behind the masks. Help us to see you behind the masks. Help us to see love and kindness behind the masks. Bless us and all for whom we pray, O oh God. Bless our thoughts and emotions, our spirits during this pandemic. May we know your courage and strength and patience and grace and spirit, we pray. Bless us and all for whom we pray, O oh God. Bless us, O oh God, as we seek to love you and others with our whole heart, soul, strength, and mind. Bless us and all for whom we pray. Amen.